Amen. Daddy is good all the time. There are so many things that are happening and we can't even keep up. You know? But we don't need to. He just brings us as long as we stay in the Spirit. As long as we stay in the Spirit. Would you turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5? Hallelujah. Let's get some, let's get some meat. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Glory, glory, glory. In verse 16. Oh, praise you, Lord. You're so good to us. All the time. Would you read it with me, please? Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Hello? We regard no one according to the flesh. Amen? We regard no one according to the flesh. Now, that's someone that's not walking in the Spirit, isn't it? I mean, there's two areas of this. Can you still hear me back there? Yeah. Okay. In other words, walking in, we regard no one walking in the flesh because we're not to be looking in the things in the flesh or to be looking in the things in the Spirit. Amen? Keep going. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know Him thus no longer. So we're not even to acknowledge Christ any longer according to the flesh because He doesn't look like the flesh. He's got woolen hair and fiery eyes. He doesn't look like any man of the flesh. Amen? Amen. So we're not to acknowledge, we're to be looking at the other things now. We're not to be walking in the natural realm and looking and depending on the things of the natural. We're to be walking and looking at the things of the Spirit. And go to verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Now, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Of course, Christ means anointed one and is anointing, and we talked about this last week, right? That means anyone who is baptized in the Holy Spirit is a new creation. Amen? Okay, now let's go on. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Say it again. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Do you know that when you're speaking it, it's happening? You're speaking it, and it's happening. So there's not only a process of being born again, or what we call a new creation, because there's certain things that we have to do, but then there's certain things that we have to do to maintain it. Amen. 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 Now, would you go to Proverbs 18? So this new creation, it doesn't say renewed individual or restored individual, does it? It says new creation. So we are actually created new. It's not restored. It's not renewed. It's created. You are now a new creation. Has everybody got it? You're a new one. You're brand new. Brand spanking new right off the showroom floor. Now your outwardness might not look like it, but that's okay. <laughs> but you're brand new. And sometimes that new thing's got to get broken in a little bit, huh? <laughs> Proverbs 18. Hallelujah. <laughs> brand new. You know what? So many times... If, if we would make this confession a lot more, we would have more revelation. Yeah. I'm a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. One day, my wife, I loved watermelon. You know, I love eating watermelon. And my wife could not eat watermelon. Her neck would scratch, her throat. I mean, she'd break out. Man, I'm telling you. And, you know, and I was sitting there wolfing a bunch of this watermelon down, and she was sitting next to me, and she was drooling. Man, I wish I could have some of that. And I turned around, and I said, you're a new creation in Christ. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You can eat watermelon. Amen. I came home, her face was in watermelon. Amen. I'm telling you, she was pigging out like she had never had watermelon before. But you know what? She got the revelation that she was a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away. Old sicknesses, old doubts, old fears, old everything has passed away. The problem is the devil don't want you to know that. But confession brings what? Possession. Oh, hallelujah. So let's go to Proverbs 18. <laughs> yeah, man, my wife was watermelon from ear to ear. <laughs> She's still eating it now. Praise God. In verse 21. <laughs> Would you read it, please? 
death and life are in the power of the tongue. Now that's powerful. These two things, if we'll get revelation that we are a new creation, not renewed individual, not restored individual, a new creature. We are a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And death and life is in the power of the tongue. So as you're speaking these things, you're actually speaking life. You're actually separating the old man from the new man. You're actually separating all the garbage that you used to be and that you used to carry. You're allowing light to shine in the places. Because as you continue to make this manifestation of confession, things begin to happen where God begins to reveal more things to you for you to confess, to bring light to it. Does everybody understand that? So death and life is in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its what? Praise. Oh, praise God. And there will be good fruits to eat, won't there? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So confession brings what? Confession. Everybody say, I am a new creation. Old things. Old things. Old things. Old desires. Old will. Old, will. Old, way. Old way. Old man. Old man. Gone away. Gone away. Brand new. Brand new. Right off the showroom floor. Right off the showroom floor. King's kid. King's kid. Offspring of the anointed one. Offspring of the anointed one. Joint heirs of Christ. Joint heirs of Christ. Seed of Abraham. Seed of Abraham. Seed in heavenly places. Seed in heavenly places. With Christ Jesus. With Christ Jesus. Son of the Most High. Son of the Most High. I'm brand new. I'm brand new. Old things. Old things. Have passed away. Have passed away. And behold. And behold. All things. All things. Have become new. Have become new. Sight. Sight. Ears. Ears. Heart. Heart. Desires. Desires. Everything. Everything. Brand new. Brand new. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Proverbs 17. In verse 27. Now, there's a lot of things that come new. A lot of things come new. You get new wisdom, new knowledge, new sight, new ears, new heart. All these things come new. New tongue. Calling those things that are not as though they are. Making confession, grabbing possession. Amen? Everything. Now, in verse 27. He who has knowledge spares his words. And a man of understanding is of a calm spirit. Did you ever get around somebody you can't shut up? Can't keep calm. More busy trying to do this than listen. You know why? He's trying to hide something. He doesn't even know. Trying to talk his way out. And then there are those who are, won't say anything because they're still trying to hide something. <laughs> so you have to have the sermon. Amen? But he who has knowledge spares his words. In other words, he uses them correctly. He uses them correctly. How many times have you been attacked and gone, oh, instead of hitting the word? Yes. Instead of doing what we're supposed to do? See, because what the devil wants us to do is keep us in that old state and not to new created state. See, the new created state knows exactly what to do. Amen. So we got to understand that it's a state of being, isn't it? That's where you're either in the Spirit or not. Now you can pray in tongues. You can praise and worship. You can do all kinds of things and still not make a conscious effort to get in the Spirit. Because if you're a new creation, everything is new. Everything is new. The thing is, is we've got to tap into all the new. And that's our responsibility. Is everybody with me? Hallelujah. So one of the things that happens with a new creator, a new creation, not a new creator. <laughs> well, to us, he's a new creator, isn't he? Because <laughs> we didn't know him before. But when you're a new creation, you get to meet the real creator. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Something begins to happen as we begin to utilize our words better. We, as we begin to use it, our tongue better, as we begin to have discernment, all of a sudden certain things are beginning to happen in our life. And one of the things that happens is, let's go to Psalm 40. The, psalm, the title is New Creation. 
and verse 3, Psalm 40 and verse 3. This is something that happens to us as we become a new creation. He has put a new song in my mouth. Believe me, as you become a new creation and walk, you have a new song in your mouth. Amen. A brand new song. Praise to our God. Many will see it in fear and will trust in the Lord. Something happens. You become a sign and wonder. People will begin to look at you and reverence God in you. Does everybody get it? They'll begin, they'll begin able to see. In fact, the people that you say hang around with will hold their tongue. I know, you know, um, I, even when I would, my brother would show up once a year to go golfing, you know. I, and now, thank God, it's once every two years. But anyways, uh, you know, I mean, he has a foul mouth and so forth. And, and finally, when he, after he got to hang around with me a little bit, he'd hold his tongue. Hallelujah. In fact, one day I was in New York and he brought me with some of his friends. And the, and the one guy would say, every time he'd miss a putt, he'd say, Jesus Christ. And I'd say, Hallelujah! <laughs> every time he'd say, Jesus Christ, I'd say, Hallelujah! You know, so we went through the whole 18 course, and every hole, you know what he was saying. And I was going, Hallelujah! And so, um, when I made another trip back to New York, uh, he, my brother, uh, he was with my brother, and he said, Yeah, you're the one who was going, Hallelujah! Every hole, weren't you? I said, Yeah, and I was praising God the whole time. You know what? But afterwards, he was they didn't, he didn't cuss. Nothing. They respected the presence of God. Amen. 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 <laughs> so what happens is God gives you a new tongue and a new song in your mouth. Because you're a new creation. And while people are around you doing whatever, you're doing the right thing. Because you're a sign and wonder to them. You're, you're bringing glory to God in everything that you're doing. If your mouth is still perverse, it's because that new creation isn't being allowed to have its place. Does everybody understand that? It's not being allowed to have his place. Hallelujah. Let's go to Mark 16. and verse 17, let's get right to it. New creation. Something begins to happen. And these signs will follow those who believe. Now, what's believe mean? Follow. Believe means to follow. See, when you're a cre new creation, you follow. You don't say, yes, Jesus is my Lord, and turn the other way. You say, yes, Jesus is my Lord. What do you want me to do, Lord? You follow when you're a new creation. And he said, and these signs will follow those who follow me. In my name, they will what? They will cast out demons. They will what? Speak with new tongues. They'll get a new tongue. And it's not about Japanese, Spanish, anything else. Italian. You get a new tongue of God. It's called tongues. Santa la Villa Bocoso. That's a new tongue. That's a tongue that you speak directly to God. Amen. Your mind has no understanding. Thank God. And they will take up serpents and they will drink anything deadly and it will by no means hurt them and they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover these signs will follow you because this is what you will be doing because you are a new creation in Christ not out of Christ you are in Christ you are now in the anointed one in his anointing and that's when Jesus said and the spirit of the Lord is upon me the spirit of the Lord is upon me and it was upon him to set the captives free free from who from the powers of darkness so when you are a new creation, signs will follow you because you will be following the sign and wonder. You will be led by the Spirit. You will be following what the Spirit is doing. Amen. Does everybody understand that? And everything in your life, everything, not just a few things, everything. See, the problem is not everybody's willing to give up everything. They're allowing the Spirit to lead them in certain things and in others they reject the Spirit. They won't allow it. They shut the door on the Holy Ghost. Some things because they don't want the Holy Spirit to reveal what He sees to you or to me. Amen? He doesn't want to... Well, sometimes we don't want to see the garbage. Just like when I saw in the Spirit... Our brother, who the Lord just opened up his heart, opened up his whole chest, and doing surgery. 
It's not completed yet. But he's doing surgery. One thing about being in Christ, you get to have surgery while you're awake. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise God. In Romans 7. <laughs> Romans 7. He who is in Christ is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Praise be to God. You know, that scripture works so well. I'm telling you, that scripture works so well. Especially when you're getting attacked. So for, nope, I'm a new creation. Amen. I don't think those things no more. I don't hear those things no more. I don't see those things no more. I'm a new creation. Amen. The devil doesn't want you to know that you're a new creation. He wants to awaken the old man. In Romans chapter 7, in verse um, 6, now let's start at 5. For when we were in the flesh, the sinful passions which were aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit to, to death. But now we have been delivered from the law, having died to what we were held by, so that we should serve in the newness of the Spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Because the Bible says the letter killeth and the Spirit brings life. So you got to understand it. it I, I want you to look at something right here. It says, should serve. Underline that. Should serve. That means you and I have a choice. That we should serve. Because there are a lot of spirit-filled believers praying in tongues and still doing the wrong things. Amen? They're still touching unclean things. And they're being tormented because of the things that they do. I mean, the more torment is rejecting the Holy Spirit than anything else. A new creation believes and follows, walks in the newness of the Spirit and not of the law. You know, there are so many people so bound to the letter. They've been so bound to the letter because sometimes they've been brought up that way. And, you know, I shared with you before that the Lord shared with me that my people love knowledge more than they love me. And knowledge will puff us up. But the Holy Ghost straightens us up. Amen? Yeah. I mean, people spend more time, instead of getting in the Spirit, trying to figure out everything in the Bible. Yeah. And if they would just get in the Spirit, they wouldn't even need to look up definitions. <laughs> They wouldn't even have to do use concordances if they would just get in the spirit and listen. They would people spend more time trying to figure out what the Bible says and st instead of going to the author. If they would just get in the spirit and go to the author, they know exactly what's going on. Because that's the place where the new creation is, the new creation in me and you. But the carnal mind likes to try and take over. Does everybody understand that? There's that fight, isn't it? There's that fight between the old man and new man. But it's the anointing that separates it. It's obedience that separates it. It's, it's us allowing the Spirit of God to separate the old man from the new man. Because we have a choice. It says that we read uh, verse 6 again, but now we have been delivered from the law having died to what we were held by so that we what? should serve in the newness of the Spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. So that means we have a choice. Does everybody understand it? We have a choice to serve in the newness of the Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Psalm 51. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory Psalm 51. Just laying a foundation here. A little bit, you know. We're getting there, though. Psalm 51 and verse 10 and 11. Everybody there? Let's read it together. Here's David crying out. Listen to what he says. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Keep going. 
Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted to you. That's a new creation. David cried out. He said, please, Lord, create in me. Because you know what? He realized he picked up garbage. You know, we're a bunch of garbage collectors and dust collectors. Every day we pick up something. So every day we got to get cleansed. Every day we got to get washed. And David realized, man, I'm filthy. Please, create in me a new heart. Please, a steadfast spirit. One that will continue to go. And don't take me from your presence. And don't take the Holy Spirit from me. Then I can be a sign and wonder to others. I can lead many to your throne room. Many will look and fear the Lord. Amen? Just like what Psalm 40 said. That's a new creation. No justification. No justifying. David wasn't making excuses, was he? He was crying out with his whole heart. He did not make excuses why he did what he did. I'm guilty. Restore me. Create in me a new spirit, a new heart. And don't take your Holy Spirit from me. You know, so many times we try to justify what we do instead of take responsibility of what we did. Amen. Then we can cry out, create in me a new spirit, a new heart. Ephesians 4, Ephesians chapter 4, in verse 17. This I say therefore in testifying the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their minds, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the what? Ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Come on, read it with me who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanliness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ. Now, hello, wait a minute. So as you and I become a new creation in Christ, we also must learn Christ. Now we have to learn His ways. And that means that we have to fellowship in the Spirit so that we can learn and obey the newness that's in us. Has everybody got it? Because so many times, even though that we're a new creation in Christ, we're still trying to do our own thing. And it isn't going to work. He says, but you've not learned Christ. Remember, freedom is learned. Trust is earned. Freedom is what? Learned. 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 And trust is earned. earned. But you have not so learned Christ. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you what? Put off concerning your formal conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful laws, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. In the what of your mind? Spirit of your mind. People are trying to renew their carnal mind. <laughs> The Bible says the carnal mind can never, you know, it can, it can never be right with God. It will always come against. But we need to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. And that you put on the what? The Who puts on the new man? So we have that choice. That we put on a new man, which was what? Come on, say it. Created. According to... God in true righteousness and holiness. So the new man that you and I have is righteousness and holiness. I mean, sometimes we can look around a room and go, where? Sometimes we can look at ourselves and go, wait a minute. <laughs> How? <laughs> but it's happening. Sometimes it's not happening all at once the way we want it to. Amen? But it is happening. But we also have to make that choice to get in. You know, one of the worst things that can happen to us is to lose the voice of God. 
you know, sometimes people get dulled out and they lose the voice of God. And they have to go to the Bible and they have to rely on everyone else to get direction instead of going in the Spirit and hearing the voice of God. Because we have not learned Christ. In verse 25, Therefore putting away what? Lying. Lying. New creation doesn't lie anymore. If you're walking in that state of new creation, you're not a liar anymore. You're not a deceiver anymore. You're not a conniver anymore. Manipulator. Let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one body. Be angry and do not sin, and do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. We don't give place to the devil anymore. Because we know his tactics. Let him who stole steal no more. We don't steal no longer. But rather let him labor working with his hands what is good that he may have something to give him who is in need. Praise God. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. Hello. We don't, we don't gossip anymore. But what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. We don't grieve the Holy Spirit anymore. We're willing to yield all the time. By whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children. That's a new creation. Colossians 3. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Colossians 3. Glory. Is everybody there? Verse 1. If then you are raised with Christ, that means you're a new creation. Does everybody get it? If then you are raised with Christ, that, that's claiming to be a new creation. Seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not the things of the earth. <clears throat> you know, so many times people get themselves in so much garbage on the earth because they've missed God and, and touched too many unclean things and, and got themselves in debt and all kinds of other stuff. They gotta put, they're putting their mind so much to trying to clean themselves up here on the earth that they can't put their mind in the things of God. But that new creation will be able to drop what is necessary to drop. But the devil likes to slide it back. So we pick it back up. And we pick that back up and brings us right back to that old man again until we're willing to drop it. No matter what it may be, it may be a circumstance in your life, something that was dropped already. In fact, the Bible says if we begin to build on things that we've been delivered from, it's an abomination. It's sin. It's transgression. And we don't want to go there. We want to set our mind in the things above, not on the things of the earth. It says in verse 3, For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory. Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth. Wait a minute. It says, Therefore put to death. Now who's supposed to put it to death? Amen. Because the new creation has dominion over His members. And you know... It's this thing the Lord gave me a while ago. When you're walking in that new creation state, your flesh is not carrying your spirit. Your spirit is carrying your flesh. Amen. So everybody got it? Your flesh doesn't carry your spirit. Your spirit carries your flesh because it has dominion over it. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth, which is what? Fornication, uncleanliness, passion, evil desires, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off all these. Wait a minute, it says, you yourselves are to put off all these. Anger, wrath, malice, 
blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with its deeds, and have put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Now, he's renewed in the knowledge. Now, knowledge is truth, isn't it? Okay, knowledge is truth. Now, there's a lot of knowledge out there, but it's not truth. There's a lot of people who preach the Bible, but it's not truth. Because they preach something they don't understand. Do you understand that? <laughs> they preach something they don't understand, and it puts people in bondage. So it's truly not knowledge. Because knowledge is truth that's understood. <laughs> is everybody with me? Hallelujah. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. Man, there's a lot of grumbling and complaining all the time. You know why? The new creation is being pushed aside. In verse 14, But above all these things, put on love, which is bound of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be what? Thank Thankful. If everyone would maintain an attitude of gratitude, the new creation would be manifested more often. Is everybody with me? Hallelujah. Let's go to uh, Titus 3. Titus chapter 3 and verse 1. Let's go on. Speak the word. We're speaking the word. Amen. Why? Because we're a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. And Titus chapter 3 and verse 1. Let's read it. Remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities. Hello? To be subject to... In other words, submit to rulers and authorities. To obey and to be ready for every good work. To speak evil of no one. To be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to all men. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. So who does it? Amen. So we've got to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. It's important. Whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, here comes that word again. We should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. That means we have a choice. In verse 8. This is a faith. This is a what? Faithful saying. And these things I want to affirm constantly that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. But avoid foolish disputes, genealogies, contentions, and strifing about the law, for they are unprofitable and useless. Hallelujah. So washing, regeneration, renewing of the Holy Spirit. One thing the devil does not want you to do is have fellowship in the Spirit so that you can walk in the Spirit and that that new creation can be constantly activated. It says, we are a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away. Sometimes people wonder why old things have come back. Because they've picked them up. The devil has a tendency to slide back things in our life. We've picked up something we shouldn't have. We've gone somewhere we shouldn't have gone. We've done something that has moved us out of position and opened the door. No matter what it is. And all of a sudden, the new creation is not manifesting. 
that old man is. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 2. 1 Corinthians 2. Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody there? In verse 9. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his Holy Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. So, wait a minute. As you're walking in the new creation, then you know what's happening? You're able to see, right? You're able to hear. And the Spirit is revealing to you things to come. He's preparing your heart for a purpose that He has for you. He's bringing you encouragement. You're walking in fellowship with Him because you are new. Everything is new, even your whole new plan. Everything is new. It's no longer your plan, but His plan. Because that old plan that you and I used to have is gone. And you'll find out that as long as you continue to walk in this newness and in the Spirit, you're going to find that the Spirit sometimes changes plans for me and you. But if you're not walking in the Spirit and in a new creation state, you're going to want to constantly do what the Spirit told you to do before, but He's changed plan. And you're going to find struggle. You're going to lose peace. And you're going to try and push and make it happen instead of allowing the Spirit to direct you. Is everybody with me? I mean, we all fall into that state, don't we? At some time or another, we're fine. We know that when we get out of that place that we have to get back in right away. In verse 11, For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things which have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Not man's wisdom. Not man's wisdom. Not man's understandings. Not man's writings but what the Spirit is teaching. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. It says, because the natural man does not what? Receive the things of the Spirit, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. discerned. Amen. So the Holy Spirit reveals the new creation, the new plan, with a new life. Amen. Amen. Let's go to Romans 12. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. Can we do it? Amen. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Now, we're to present it. That's a representation of surrender, isn't it? Total surrender. Okay. And do not be conformed to this world, but re be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So we see that there's three areas here. There's good, acceptable, and perfect will of God, isn't there? Now, in every, in every decision and everything that you and I do, there's either the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Whatever choice you're going to make, can be totally out of the will of God, totally out, or can be good, acceptable, and perfect. And all depends on what we do and how we go through the process of what we're supposed to do. How much we're yielding, how much we're not yielding. Every decision and everything that you and I do in every area of our life, whether it's choice of job, whether it's how we work, do our job, whether it's choice of spouse, whether it's whatever it is, can is going to either end up not God's will or His good, acceptable, or perfect. And there is a process for that. Everybody with me? Go to Matthew 16. 
Matthew 16. When we as believers go through a, uh, I'd say like a cleansing, a squeezing. And, and as we're talking about making decisions and certain things that we have to go through and whatever, something's happening in us and God is always trying to remove certain things from us and put Him in. Sometimes we feel like it's big chunks, little chunks, whatever it is, but sometimes we feel squeezed in in a certain area and there's nowhere to go but trust in God. And our life should constantly be in that way. Now there's a time when the Lord says, you know what to do and you got to do it. But there's a, a place where you and I get to sometimes to where we have to do something we don't want to. Just, come on, now listen. We have to do something because we do, but we don't want to. But we know we have to do it because it's right. Does everybody understand that? That's stage one. Stage two is when we get through that, in other words, that part, you and I can be doing something we don't want to do, but we know it's right. That can be going on for a while. In fact, you can be doing that for a long time. Then you, stage two is the part where you're doing something not because you don't want to do it or you want to do it. You're doing it now because you know it's best for you. So we go from one place of not wanting to do it but we're doing it because we know it's right. And then we go to the next place where we're doing it not that we fully want to do it, but we know that it's for our best interest. Amen. Is everybody with me? Yeah. Then we get to the final place where we're doing it because it pleases Him and we get free there. Amen. Is everybody with me? It's a place where we get free. But sometimes we have to do what we have to do even though we don't like it, but we know that it's right. Then we get to that place where we're doing it, even though we fully don't want to do it, but we know that it's for our best interest. Then we get to that place where we do it because it's pleasing Him and those other two are wiped away and you walk in freedom. Is everybody with me? Now, it seems that in certain areas you're walking in freedom, in certain areas we're doing what we don't want to do, but we know we have to because it's right. Is everybody with me? It's a cycle process that we go through. That's known as good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. In the beginning, we're doing it because we know we have to. In the second part, we're doing it because we know it's good for us, so we accept it. In the third part, we doing it because it's pleasing Him and we're walking in a hundred fall in the perfect will of God. Now, that's the same thing as Matthew 16. Is everybody with me? Everybody understand what just was just shared? Matthew 16 and verse 24. Then Jesus said to His disciples, what? If anyone desires to come after Me, let him deny himself. That's that first one. You don't want to do it, but you know you got to do it. Because <laughs> you know it's the right thing to do. And take up his cross. Well, now you're doing it because you, you know it's best for you. And follow me. Now you're doing it because it pleases Him. And this is where you're free. Does everybody understand that? For whoever desires to save his life will what? Lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will, will find it because it's that new creation life that you're going to find. Hello? But we all must go through this process. We have to go through that process in every decision. We have to go through that process in every move. Everything that you and I do must go through that process. People get sentenced to the program here. They really don't want to be sentenced here. They want to be home with mom and dad and the kids and the wives. But they know it's the best thing to do. 
They don't want to, but they know it's the right thing. Then as they struggle through, because the first two weeks are pretty rough, as they're dying to self, man, you know, I could be here. And then the Lord is reminding you where you were. <laughs> and then the next part is that next stage where, okay, I'm doing it because I'm surrendering a little bit more and I'm realizing it's for my best interest. And then when we get to that place where we're doing it because we, we want to please Him, we're free of the other two things. And we're walking as the new creation in Christ. Does everybody understand that? Glory to God. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Now, you got to understand something. This is in everything. Everything that you and I are going through, every day, even this food that you eat, even the food you eat. You know what? Some of these things, we know we have to give it up, and we don't want to. Those sweet cookies and all that stuff that's killing us. Those sodas, where they have NutraSweet in it that cause brain damage. All of that poop that's in food. And we look at it, our flesh desires it. But you know what? We have to get to that place where we're willing to give it up. Not because we want to, because we have to. And as you give it up, you'll find that you'll get to a place where you're giving it up because you know it's your best interest. Amen. And then you'll get to a place where you give it up because it pleases Him and you no longer have that desire. It's gone. So there is a process, isn't there? <laughs> oh, to God be the glory. Let's go to John 14. <laughs> John 14. You know, it's just like people have been bound by religion for a long time. And they see fruits of somebody else that's been baptized in the Holy Spirit and they see that new creation. Because that sign and wonder wants, somebody else wants what that person is. And, and, and you know, and especially we do ministry in the jail and we get so much jailhouse religion and so forth, you know. And we see so much stuff that's in there and, and, and others come in and preach bondage. And so we see a lot of this, this bondage and things that are... And some of the guys, you know, they see the fruit and, 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 and you know, they finally get to a point where, okay, I'm going to do it. I don't want to do it. I don't even want to believe it. But I can't deny it. Amen. So I'm going to do it. And then they get to a point where they realize it's for their best interest. And then they get to a point where... They're doing it to please God, especially like in worship. Man, there are guys in there sometimes with their hands folded. They don't want to know nothing. <laughs> but they see everybody else having a good time. And they're thinking, whoa. You know what? Of course, then they get convicted because I tell them, if you don't get up, that's where all the demons go. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get up and worship the Lord. They're looking for dry places, brother. You're the number one. You might as well put a, a flag outside and invite... You know, you know where the bars that say spirits and food? Hello. Those are called demons and food. So they finally get up and they start tapping a foot because they can't take it any longer. The Holy Ghost is convicting them so badly. And I'm assisting. <laughs> and, and, and then... And then finally, after, after they're doing it for a little bit, you know, one foot starts tapping, and the next time they're doing, instead of just two songs, they're doing three songs. And then finally they get the revelation that it's good for them. It's for their best interest. And then finally they break through, and they start doing it because they please, the, they know they want to please the Lord. And you know what? They're free. They're free. Now they want to worship God because they know in that area the new creation is being refreshed, filled and having fellowship in the Spirit. Amen. Amen. So there's that process of going through. Jesus explained it right here. Look at it. In verse 6. And Jesus said to them, I am the way. That's the cross. Amen. Jesus did not want to go die on the cross. He had to. 
Come on, he was in the garden and said, Dad, <laughs> is there any way this can pass me by? <laughs> you know, I mean, come on, I'm God. <laughs> you know? But you know, he had to. And then he got to the point, he says, I am the way, the truth. Well, you know what? He knew that it was for his best interest. Hello? So he had to go. And he says, and I am the life. So he got to this place where, is where the spirit is. Life. So he himself set up this whole process for me and you. Deny, pick up and follow, way, truth, and life. Good, acceptable, and perfect. Only in the Spirit is the perfect will going to manifest. Only when you and I are fellowshipping with the Spirit as the new creation does the perfect will of God manifest in our life. And we don't want the good and acceptable. We want the perfect because that's where a hundredfold return is. Now Jesus went all the way to the perfect will, didn't he? Amen. And because he went all the way to the perfect will, he was a life-giving spirit. And now look at Every one of us is in this room because he went all the way. Amen. He went through the process. Amen. And you and I have to go through the process. And in certain areas of our life, we're going to go through that process, no matter what it is, until we finally give up everything until we find now let me share something with you you can try and go from um well i gotta no i'm gonna go right to pleasing god it won't work because it's called headway but it must be heart way does everybody hear me it must be heart way people try to jump from one to number three and they have troubles they try and fake it, but they can't make it. Amen. They try and whatever, but they can't make it. Until they go through that process, because in that process, Christ is being formed. He's being learned in whatever it is. Whether it's the job, the relationship, the eating, the lust, whatever it is, the strongholds, Whatever it is, he's going to have to bring us through a process to where we finally get to that place where we're doing it because it does please him, not by mind, but by heart. Because you're a new creation now. And it's done by heart. Hello? Hallelujah. Go to 2 Corinthians 3. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the Life. Glory to God. New creation. Old things they have passed away. So you gotta understand that in this new creation, old things are constantly passing away if you'll let them. Remember the Lord says that you and I have been given dominion over all things. Well, you have dominion over all things. You can have dominion in keeping the old. Or you can have dominion in letting it go. You can have dominion of not allowing light to shine in an area of your life and truth. Or you can have dominion in allowing it to. It's our choice. We are stewards. How close you want to get to God is your choice and mine. And you'll find that the closer you get to Him, the more He reveals His heart and your heart. And you're going to find out that there's a lot of things in your heart that you got to get rid of. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. In verse 17. Would you read it with me? Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. That's called freedom. Jesus said, I am the way, truth, and life. In other words, the life is a representation of where the Spirit is, isn't it? So if you're allowing the Spirit into those areas of your life, you're free. But if you're not, we're still going bondage. 
Some of us are still not willing to let go, even though we've been convicted, even though God has shown us, we're not willing to let go. But as long as you continue to do what you're supposed to do, even though that you don't want to, hello? You'll get to that place where you know it's best for you, and you'll get to that place well, you'll do it because you want to please Him and you'll find that the Spirit will be there and you'll be free from it. It is a process. Listen, when, um, you know, I mean, I got sick and tired of being sick and tired of everything when I was out on the drugs. When I heard, when I felt that it wasn't about just getting off of drugs, I needed to have a whole new life. Well, okay, I need a whole new life. I guess I better do what I better do. I don't want to do it. I didn't want to go into detox. You know, I just wanted a bunch of money and go out and continue to do what I was doing. But I didn't want to. But that was the only thing I knew then. So I made the choice to go into detox. Now, I didn't want to go into detox. And even when I got there, I didn't want to go. But then, after a day or two, it was like, okay, I know it's for my best interest. And then I got to a point where, okay, I'm letting go and I'm going to let God. I didn't know Him yet, but I got to that point. And I found out that no matter what, you know, I mean, if they wanted somebody to do dishes, I was volunteering. I didn't care anymore. You know why? I didn't want to go back. I didn't want to go back. Yes, that first decision, I didn't want to do it. And then it was like, okay, I'm going to do it all the way. And I was getting freer. See, God was preparing me and positioning me to slam dunk me. <laughs> he was getting ready to bring me in that place where it was way, truth, and life. See, He was getting me in that place where I was going to allow the Holy Spirit to have access to this vessel. And when I did allow that to happen, I was slam dunked in the Holy Ghost and a new creation was birthed. Never going back again. Not that there's still not processes that I still have to go through. That's why God allows you to wait. Let me explain something. Let's say you're building a project. So you're building a project... And you can't go any further because you're waiting for supplies. <laughs> and you're waiting. And it's delayed. And you're waiting and you're dying. Got it. You know what? You can't advance any further until God supplies me and you. And if you try to go beyond without being supplied by God, you go in the flesh and you'll bring shame to the name of the Lord. Because no flesh will glory. That's why he causes me and you to wait. See, because he desires fellowship. Sometimes we won't. Even, we don't even have fellowship. Or I think it's God will go, go do it. <laughs> Must be God. Came to my mind. <laughs> I had this unction. I feel this way. No confirmation. No revelation. Just a goosebump. Uh uh. Assuming. Is not God. Faith comes by hearing. In other words, God told you to, then you got to know when to go. But He's not going to send you without supplying you. It's just like He supplies the seed for the sower. People go out and get themselves in trouble and all kinds of things, buy whatever it is, when God didn't supply the seed. Amen? Amen. You know why? They're trying to get to... Part three, when they haven't finished part one yet. They haven't been supplied. And what happens is it crumbles. And they try and weasel their way out. And it doesn't work. Because what was happening now is we're trying to push away light and truth. But when we finally let it in and we surrender and we want to do the right thing because we know it pleases Him, He moves. He moves on our behalf. He frees us. He brings us to that place where that new creation... Because see, we groan inside because we are a new creation. We are groaning 
for the rest of the part to come. We're waiting. We're groaning. Our spirit's crying out. Give me that new body. Help. More of you. We all want more of God. He wants more of us. <laughs> Hallelujah. Where were we? Second Corinthians chapter three seventeen. And now the now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in the mirror, the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image, from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. That's that process, glory to glory, trials and tribulations, whatever it is. Amen. Let's go to chapter 4 and verse 7. Chapter 4, verse 7. Let's read it. But we have this treasure in earth and vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. Sounds like stage 1, doesn't it? We are perplexed but not in despair, persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed, always carrying about in the body and the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Christ also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal body. That's that squeezing we've got to go through. Go to James 1. James 1. Hallelujah. James 1 and verse 2. 2 through 4. Let's read it together, please. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall in the various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, now he's sharing with you that this is because of lack of wisdom. You know, trials and tribulations will produce wisdom. Amen. It will produce godly wisdom if you use it according to that way. You can either be rebellious toward it and go through it, kicking, screaming, and being dragged along and never get to that third part where you're finally doing it for him. Or you can go the easy way. <laughs> and it will produce wisdom. Then you can share it with someone else. Amen. If anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. So he's talking about this as being wisdom. We can utilize this as gaining wisdom. Now there are things that prevent us from going there. The number one thing is fear. And the Bible says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but love, power, and sound mind. Amen. One of the things, fear, things that shake hands with fear is doubt, pride, unbelief, fear. Sometimes people are afraid. They're afraid of what people might think. Oh, what if I do this? Huh? Yeah, but if, if I... If, if, if I do this, what's going to happen to me? <clears throat> you know, there's a lot of things that... Fear is the number one thing that comes against the body of Christ, the people of God. It's fear. Some people get caught in stage one and never go to stage two or three because fear has wrapped them up there. I'm a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You got to take your dominion. You've got to let the new creation take the dominion over the old man. And it's you're not going to do it in your thoughts, and you're not going to do it in your deeds. You know, I mean, just like the other, some of these programs are out there. They put men to work and women to work, and they're so busy that they don't think about using. They don't think about what they the old person was until they stop. <laughs> Once they stop, you know. Or they, they drop. They have to drop so they can go to sleep. But see, they've never gone through the process. They've never gone through the process. It's all trying to be mind. Mind control and, 
But it can't work that way. Because we must go through the process. And only Christ can truly free us because life is life and truth. And you and I we must allow life and truth in every area of our life. If we're not willing to, we'll get stuck because fear is what's holding us from going there. You know, I hear people say, yeah, I pray that God won't give me any pain or something. Man, yeah, I don't want, I, I will never pray for patience. That's fear. You better pray for patience because that's a fruit of the Spirit. If you haven't got patience, you better get rid of that I got to do spirit and let the Spirit of Christ have His way in us. Some people just can't be still. They got to do something. Yeah, man, if I don't stay busy, man, you need to get rid of that demon because he's pushing. And the light of Christ is not being able to shine there. And that fear is gripping and holding so that we can't go through the process. Is everybody all right? So patience is okay, all right? <laughs> That's called waiting on God. Isaiah 40. Wow, I didn't know it was that late. Isaiah 40. We're almost done. Isaiah 40. Hallelujah. Utarabasi. Verse 31, let's read it together. Isaiah 40, verse 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with e ooh, with eagle like with eagle with wings like eagles. And they shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. If we'll let God bring us through the process. Amen. First Peter chapter five. Waiting on those supplies. First Peter chapter five. So everybody's going through this. Does everybody understand that? We go through it all of, and it's not just you know, once something's completed, sometimes we're going through this in four different areas in our life or five different areas of our life. But you can't do the jump. You've got to allow God to bring you through it because He is transforming us into His image in every area. We've got to allow Him to have His way. And we've got to allow Him to, give, to take what He needs to take from us. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 6. Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that He may what? Exalt you in due time, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Yeah, man, he's looking. He's looking who he can grab. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have suffered a while, stage one, <laughs> perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Wow. That's where now he has reigned in that area and you are walking in freedom. Amen? Praise God. Whoa. Oh. Matthew 7. Matthew chapter 7. And this is where we get into that place where, you know, some people are saying, well, I'll try God. <laughs> I'll try God. You know what? They'll stay in stage one until they finally decide to do it. <laughs> in verse 13 and 14. Read it with me, please. Enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. That's that process, isn't it? It's narrow. It's difficult. No one said it was going to be easy. 
But if you're willing to do it, there is freedom. There's freedom in every area. There's life in the other. There is relationships. There is fellowship. There's power. There's anointing. And there's signs and wonders. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Oh, you be a new creation. That's where that new creation is manifest. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 through 18. And then one more scripture. Praise God. Hopefully. Let's read 16 through 18. Therefore we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Keep going through the process. For our light afflictions, even though you may think they're rough afflictions, but we got to claim them as light afflictions. For our light afflictions, which is but for a moment, even though it seems like a lifetime, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And that's where we want to get to. We're not going by what we see. We're doing because we're pleasing Him. And we know that we're doing it to expand the kingdom of God, bring glory to His name. And it's not about a temporary moment or a temporary realm of fulfillment, but it's an eternal. But we've got to allow God to be in that area. We've got to get to that place in everything in our life. Everything. No matter what it is. And finally, Philippians 3. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Philippians 3. And he who is in Christ is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. If we let it. <laughs> Philippians 3 and verse 14. Powerful. Let's read this. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, as many as are mature, have this mind. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us be of the same mind. Brethren, join in following my example and note those who so walk as you have us for pattern. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to His glorious body, according to the working by which he is able to even subdue all things to himself. So let's allow God to bring us through the process. Amen? No matter what it is. No matter what it is in every area of our life. So that the Spirit of the Lord can have his way there and that you and I can walk totally free as a sign and wonder to others. In Jesus' name. Amen. And everybody said, Amen. Hallelujah.